Hey, this is Joe. Thanks for coming back for another video. In this video, we're going to discuss what an amp meter shunt is, how it works, and do you really need to use an amp meter shunt? What we have here on the bench are a couple of amp meter shunts. We'll talk about shunts in a minute, but we have a couple other things to discuss first. Before we can talk about the benefits of an amp meter shunt, we must discuss electrical wire size. In the USA, electrical wiring is covered by two organizations, the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA. They publish the National Electric Code, the NEC, which is a set of standards that governs the installation and maintenance of electrical systems in buildings and structures. So this would be the organization that controls uh, the wiring in your home, and other types of uh, building, whether they be commercial or domestic. The Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE, is an organization that develops and publishes standards for the automotive industry, including electrical systems. Then we also have the American Wire Gauge, the AWG, and this is a standard used to specify the diameter of electrically conducting wire. We need to discuss wire gauge, and wire diameter. On the screen here, I have an automotive wire amperage capacity chart. Normally, according to the American wire gauge, the AWG, the larger the wire diameter, the larger the current the wire can carry. In the standard for the AWG, the smaller the number in gauge, the larger the wire diameter is. When wiring an amp meter, into a circuit, the meter must be wired in line, meaning that the circuit must go through the meter to get an accurate measurement of current. If your circuit must handle larger amounts of current, then the wire throughout the entire circuit must match the American Wire Gauge standard for current carrying capability. I'll put a link to this uh, chart here in the description. Let's uh, take a look at an example here. So if we look on this chart for the 14 gauge wire, 15 amps is the capability with a wire of 6.1 feet long. If we come over and look at the same 14 gauge wire, uh, it has an 18.4 foot range, but can only carry a maximum of five amps. Let me give you a realistic example of when you would benefit from using a shunt. Let's say you have a late model pickup truck and that pickup truck has an alternator that can deliver 160 to 180 amps. You either have a camper or a travel trailer and you want to charge your coach or storage batteries when you are driving to your destination. One of the possible solutions is to use a DC to DC converter. Let's say for our example, our DC to DC converter, which is right here, uh, can charge at up to 60 amps. Let's take a look at the configuration here. We have the vehicle's alternator. We have the vehicle's battery that is used to power the vehicle. Then off that battery, we have the DC to DC charger. Then off of the other side of the DC to DC charger, we have our storage batteries or battery, depending on how many you have here. Now there's a couple different places you can put an amp meter uh, in this circuit here. One is uh, this battery is considered a load because the alternator is charging this battery as the vehicle consumes current and your DC to DC charger consumes current to charge the auxiliary battery. The other load you have is your auxiliary battery. The DC to DC charger is charging this battery, so it's consuming uh, current to charge the battery. When a battery starts to get close to being fully charged, the amperage starts tapering off and when the battery is totally charged, it's near zero current. So there may be a couple different places where you would want to put an amp meter in, the, in this circuit. One would be in this area where you want to see how much current your starter battery is consuming. Uh, the other location may be in this 
location. They want to be able to determine the state of charge of your auxiliary batteries, meaning that as we get closer to those batteries being full, the current is going to start tapering off. Now let's look how we would wire in a shunt in the circuit and why you would want to do so. We have our coach batteries back in the camper or trailer. The distance between the vehicle battery and the storage batteries could be up to 15 to 20 feet, depending on how long our truck, camper, and or trailer is. So we need to calculate what size AWG, the American wire gauge, that we need. Go out and take a look at the wire size between your alternator and your vehicle battery. Those battery cables have a very large wire diameter due to the amount of amps needed to charge the vehicle battery and the coach batteries. As we said earlier, our DC to DC charger can charge up to 60 amps. So let's take a look at what wire gauge we would need uh, for the various storage battery, the DC to DC charger, etc. Let's come over and look on the uh, wire gauge chart here. We have a 50 amp and a 100 amp rating. So 50 amps is not quite enough current uh, for our DC to DC charger or the distance between the vehicle battery and the coach battery. So we're going to have to use the 100 amp rating to calculate our, our wire length. We see there's a distance at 100 amp of 14.9 feet at 100 amps and that is a wire gauge of 2 or we have a 18.9 feet distance at 100 amp with a wire gauge of 1. Those are very large wires. So that means when we wire our circuit from the vehicle battery to the coach batteries, we need a rather thick wire. So how is a shunt going to help us out in this situation? Let's say we want to wire in an amp meter in two different locations. Let's say we want an amp meter on the dash of our truck. So as we're driving, we can check the current status of our battery. The other situation we may have is considering these are your coach batteries right here. And your load could be any number of, of items inside the trailer or camper. Could be a propane stove needing uh, 12 volts to run the thermostat. You may have some LED lights. You may have a, a small electric heater or any other type of uh, a mixer or oven or whatever that you may want to run. That could be your load. Or this could be the vehicle battery and your load could be your coach batteries. Now notice on this diagram there's a very thick wire here and between the batteries and the load. And that could be between the vehicle batteries and the coach batteries or between the coach batteries and whatever you're trying to drive inside of your camper or trailer. So we want to wire the other amp meter inside the camper or trailer so when we're using our appliances uh, when we're camping we can determine what kind of amperage load and voltage we want to determine the state of our battery. So we can then put a separate amp meter inside the camper or trailer. So being that I said earlier, if we didn't use a shunt, as like you see here in the picture, this is your shunt right here, we could wire this theoretically without a shunt, but the wiring in the circuit between let's say the battery and the load we said was uh, either one gauge or two gauge. So that means if we want to wire in an amp meter because it's in line in the circuit as you see here the current flows between the, this circuit up through the meter back out through the meter and back into the rest part the rest of the circuit. That means this wiring without a shunt would have to be the same thickness as the wiring in the main part of the circuit. Now, as we said, large diameter wire is very expensive. It's very heavy. And let's say we want to put the amp meter in the truck on the dash 
and also on either the camper or trailer near the storage battery so we can check their status from time to time. Would you necessarily want to have or consider it safe to be pumping 100 amps of current through wiring inside either your, your uh, vehicle in the vehicle passenger compartment or in your camper or motorhome pulling uh, up to 100 amps? You wouldn't want to, to do that. So the purpose of a shunt, there is four connections on a shunt. There's two large connections on each end, which the main part of the current in the circuit flows through. And that's where your large wires have to be. Then let's say we want to run, there's the two other terminals. And those two other terminals, because of the way the shunt is constructed, allows you to monitor the current using a very small American wire gauge wire. So you could easily run the amp meter gauge to your dash in your vehicle and another amp meter inside of your camper or trailer using very thin wires. And that way that costs less. The amount of current running through the amp meter from the shunt is very, very small. So now that we understand some basics about what a shunt does, how it works, and even the fact that you can do away with a shunt if your whole circuit consumes a very small amount of current, you don't need the shunt. So let's say we have an, a circuit that is uh, running uh, LED lights or something very, very small. Maybe the most you think you would ever get is a short distance, maybe 15 amps. So you could theoretically run almost the whole circuit on 14 gauge wiring. And in that case, because 14 gauge is rather small, you could do away with the shunt if you want, or you could still use the shunt and use even smaller wires to uh, power and drive the amp meters in either or both locations. These are two different shunts right here. Shunts consist of two large terminals and two small terminals. Here's two large terminals, and then here's the two small terminals. There's In this particular shunt, there's also a ribbon cable and little terminal screws. So there's several different ways to attach this shunt to your circuit. Now, as we said, in order to properly measure current in a circuit, we need to put the amp meter in line with the circuit, meaning that the circuit has to make a complete path between one end through the load, the battery, or the power supply back over to the other terminal. And that way you have a complete circuit all the way through. Now, when attached to the large terminals, current goes through at whatever the rated amperage capacity is in the circuit and of course according to the wire gauge that you're using. Now the two small terminals here and here on this shunt and there and there on this other shunt, what that allows you to do is to take and there's a distance if you look between here and here and there and there. The little screws go across this distance and creates a known resistance value. And how you can tell what this is, is on the side of the fuse it will give a rating. The first number, 100 amps in this case, is the maximum amount of amps that this shunt can handle. Okay, the second number says 75 millivolts. That means that across these two smaller points at a hundred amps of current your meter should read 75 millivolts and normally if you're using a dedicated meter not like a multimeter but a dedicated either a digital or an analog amp meter you want to make sure that you purchase the meter to match that 75 millivolt because that's how the meter is calibrated based on the value of the shunt. Same thing on this. 
This is 150 amp maximum current and it has 75 millivolts reading. So what does that short distance with a set resistance do for you? In this particular case, we can run the maximum current through the circuit. In, in our example, we said that we needed to have up to 100 amp capability. So across the large terminals, we could easily handle with either shunt 100 amps of current going through the main portion of the circuit. The smaller portion being that it's rated 75 millivolts. So at 100 amps, if you're pull pushing 100 amps through this shunt or 150 amps through this shunt, and if you take a reading across these two terminals, it's going to measure the resistance and it's going to give you a maximum of 75 millivolts at 100 amps. So if instead of 100 amps, we put through this circuit, let's say we only put one amp so based on the ratio here, so in st at 100 amps, normally we would get 75 millivolt reading across these two terminals. If we only put one amp across this shunt, then proportionately we would then get 7.5 millivolts as opposed to 75 millivolts. That's how a shunt works and that's why you can attach very small wires to the meter side of the shunt and you can again route your wires into the cab of your vehicle or the cabin of your camper or uh, trailer without having to worry that you're exposing your passengers to a very high amount of current. Also you're saving money because if you would have to run one gauge or two gauge wire all over the place it would be very expensive very heavy very bulky not easy to wrap around or to put in a small location let's say on the dash of your vehicle or right near the storage batteries in your camper or your trailer here we have my variable load we have my power supply we have a meter and we have the shunt right here the shunt is wired through the circuit let me show you the power supply. We're 12 volts, 1 amp, 12 watts. So that means through the shunt, we have 1 amp of current flowing through the major portion of the circuit. If you look at the indicator, on the variable power supply it's fluctuating between 1.02 and 1.04 current now let's take a meter this is my meter right here we have it set to DC amps and now what we're going to do is we're going to touch the meter across the two screws on the shunt we have 0.007 to 0.008 amps so if we convert that to milliamps, that would be between 7.5 7 and, and 8 milliamps, which according to the ratio that we have written on the side of the shunt, it's 100 amps, so it can take up to, a, up to 100 amps through the shunt, and at 100 amps, it's going to read a 75 millivolts so we would then use an amp meter rated at 75 millivolts but if we're using a standard multimeter which isn't calibrated to 75 millivolts we can go through and put the meter on amps and notice we're getting a 0 0.006 0 0.007 uh, running out of digits there it should be a 0 0.00775 but we're doing okay with this so that gives you an idea of the ratio of reduced current through the shunt because of this, uh, this accurately measured resistance across this distance between the two smaller screws. So hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.